Hi friends, my name is Tris, and this is No Boilerplate, focusing on fast, technical videos. I have dual-booted Linux, mostly Ubuntu, since 2006, and used it as my daily driver for over a decade. I produce all of my videos, podcasts, and music on Linux. And in my free time, I spend a lot of time gaming on Linux too. Linux distributions are primarily differentiated by their package manager, and in its system, I guess. But as a user who wants to get on with my life, I don't care very much about that. They're certainly not differentiated by the desktop environment, GNOME, KDE or whatever, or a fancy colour theme. You can get those anywhere. These are general purpose operating systems. Let's get more abstract. The three most important aspects for a Linux distro for me are features, reproducibility and stability. Everything everywhere all at once. And they all boil down to one simple principle. How many fresh packages can I safely install? There is a standout winner in all of these categories, and it's not even close. Here's the graph from Repology.org that made me realise I'd been sleeping on something special with NixOS. It has more fresh packages than any other distro, like three times more. This astonished me. Even the impressive Arch user repository has fewer packages and far fewer fresh packages. Of note is that the inflection point was around 2022, looking at the old stable repos. But the genius of NixOS goes far beyond the number of packages. Everything you see in this video, script, links and images are part of a markdown document available freely on GitHub under a public domain license. Part 1. You don't have to live like this. Two years ago, I tried out using a Steam Deck as my main machine. It worked very well, and then a year ago, I tried Asahi Linux on Apple Silicon. Both these systems are built on Arch Linux. When I switched back to my main desktop, after realising that Apple's hardware was not as good as they claimed, I kept using Arch. I had converted all my dot .files and config, I might as well stay and enjoy all the cutting edge packages, I thought. Well, one day, as happens now and then with a bleeding edge rolling release distro, a systemd update reversed my mouse buttons. It only affected my exact mouse driver, which had a bug in it. The great thing about rolling release and cutting edge distributions like Arch is that you get to be a beta tester whether you like it or not. I filed a bug and that afternoon it was patched. The Arch community is incredible. Then a few weeks ago, a kernel update stopped my machine from booting. And it seemed as though no one on the whole internet had the same problem as me, and so I had to reinstall to keep working. A tale as old as time. I have good backups for a reason. I thought this was the way it had to be on Linux. Stability or cutting edge features, not both. NixOS is impressive in a way I didn't realise until recently. Probably, like you over the years, I'd heard something about its declarative package manager and system-wide rollback of updates. But that sounded like an overly cautious focus. I'm here for the latest and greatest. Stability is for cowards. But I wasn't right about that at all. NixOS's genius is in its simplicity. NixOS is built on the Nix package manager, which is nothing like apt or pacman or yum or brew. You don't use it like this. It's a package manager much more like npm, gem, and whatever tool Python is using by the time you watch this. To use these tools, you specify in a package file, be it package.json, gem file, or pyproject.toml, the exact packages you want, and then run a single install command to bring your system up to date with whatever you have declared in that file. This is called declarative package management. Imagine your whole system configured from a single declarative package file. That's NixOS. And you don't have to write the package file from scratch. NixOS has a graphical installer that looks like all the other Linux installers. It looks a bit better than the Arch one to me, actually. Here's a cut down version of my base config that the NixOS installer gave me. Everything is configured here, from the bootloader and EFI config at the top, to the networking time zone, and even the users on the machine. You can think of NixOS wrongly as a templating config for system files. Imagine that the strings here get built into the etcfs tab file, the etc password file, and the networking daemon config, all without you having to learn anything about them or how they work. How many config files are on your machine right now? Do you even know where they all are? While you're learning how to read the weird 20 year old Nix config format, just remember that it's the last config file you'll ever have to touch. Cool, right? It's worth the small upfront learning of this new format. Everything is configured from a single file. Well, it's two files actually, but no more, I promise, unless you want to split things up for organisation. See on line one, we import a hardware configuration. Here's that file. These two files are separate by default, so you can share configuration.nix across all your computers because each one has their own separate hardware config. This is a genius default. Here's an excerpt of my hardware config 
generated by the NixOS installer automatically. Kernel module configuration, file system mount points, and networking tweaks, it's all here. But this file is not just a list of packages, it's also configuration for those packages. Yes, you can throw all your normal packages in the environment.systempackages list, but that's not magic enough. There are NixOS options, which is what these are called, for everything from NeoVim to Steam. Baldur's Gate 3 is playing great on my machine, by the way. And once you've got your system config exactly how you want, version it with Git, store it on a USB drive, anything you want, then build the same configuration on your laptop. It'll work unchanged because the hardware config is separate, remember? You could even temporarily boot a friend's machine with all your custom config, then perfectly revert back when you're done. Or you could drop the config file on a bootable NixOS USB drive and have your own personalized live OS. You can do all this fearlessly. Every time you make a change to your system by updating configuration.nix, in addition to applying the changes, NixOS creates a new menu item that you can roll back to right from the boot menu. It's impossible to leave yourself in an unbootable state because all previous configurations are saved. This is like booting a previous kernel version, but with all the other moving pieces reverted too. For someone who has suddenly become a professional online person, this is such a relief when I have deadlines and videos need making and an update ruins my day. This can't happen to me anymore. Or if it does, I roll back, keep working, and fix it later on, after the deadline. Part two, tips. Here are the most important tips I've found along the way, through trial and error as I've tumbled down the NixOS rabbit hole. If you want me to teach you them personally, that is possible through my Patreon, because I'm offering a limited number of mentoring slots. If you'd like one-to-one -one tuition on Rust, personal organization, creative production, web tech, or anything that I talk about in my videos, do sign up and let's chat. I offer other tiers too. You can see and give feedback on my videos up to a week early, as well as get Discord perks and even your name in the credits. It's just me running this channel, and I'm so grateful for everyone for supporting me on this wild adventure. Okay, tips. Many tutorials talk about NixEnv. Don't use this. It doesn't interact with your declarative configuration.nix, and when I first tried NixOS about four years ago, I bounced off it because I couldn't see the point in learning this alien distro just to get non-reproducibility again. Never use it. The ease of switching all your packages and config at once means that you don't have to start from scratch. You can drop in other people's config and switch trivially. If you don't like it, rollback is a single command. Maybe, like me, you'll install fresh to start with, but then want to try out other fun configs you see. That's easy. Try out 10 in the same day. This is either genius or stupid, or perhaps more likely both. When you use NixOS day to day, you find yourself doing two things very often. One, editing your config, and two, running NixOS rebuild, switch. This is the primary loop of NixOS configuration. Imagine how often you edit a config file or add a package or run a configuration command on other Linux distros. All those actions and disparate configs are unified on NixOS. I think nearly everyone builds their own script or alias for streamlining this process. Here is mine at the moment, and no doubt I'll improve it in time. Let me do a quick demo. Here's what it outputs when adding a package, in this case, NeoFetch. Running the script opens my config in my editor. I use Vim, but you could just as easily use VS Code. After adding it to my package list, I save and quit Vim, and the script then continues. First, auto-formatting the config with Alejandra, then displaying a condensed git diff, reminding me what I've changed across my Nix files. It's simple in this case, of course. Then it kicks off a rebuild of my NixOS config, throwing away most of the standard out. I just don't care what's happening, as long as it's going fine. I've already tabbed back to what I was supposed to be doing before I fell down a system configuration rabbit hole. If successfully built, the config is then committed to Git with the current generation's metadata as the commit message. Here, we just built generation 160. And if we run git log, we see the latest commit is up to date. This is a feature that's missing from NixOS, I think. While you can revert to any previous working generation of your system, it doesn't also revert your configuration.nix, which I assumed it would. Versioning your config is the solution to this, and good practice recommended everywhere. Committing after every single successful build feels like working in an extreme TDD environment, which I love. If you're concerned about the number of commits this generates, firstly, don't, who cares? But secondly, the script doesn't push the changes. You could squash these commits into a larger feature with a human-readable name before pushing. If something goes wrong in a normal NixOS build, not using my script, the vomit that hits your terminal is terrible, and a huge problem for newbies. Call me spoiled, coming from the Rust world with the best errors in the business, but this is unacceptable, right? Even simple errors like this small typo are often hidden in the middle of an incomprehensible traceback. This one's mercifully small, at least. The human-readable error isn't at the end, or at the beginning, it's in the middle. This is just bad design. 
Reading only the error is often just as useful as reading the whole traceback. The errors themselves are usually pretty comprehensive, and so my script just prints that, so you know simply what has gone wrong. The full log for the last rebuild is saved in nixoswitch.log for if something has really gone wrong. Also, for very long-running compiles, such as entire browser builds, it's nice to tail this log to see why your fans have spun up. But if all goes well, like here, your system is brought up to date with your declarative config and you're ready to go, and can run whatever new package or config you've just added. Here's my NeoFetch for fun. By default, NixOS will be tracking the stable channel, where package testing happens before releasing them to the public, like in most distributions. But with two commands, you can switch to unstable, bleeding edge. Don't like it, something terrible happened, well you know what to do. Select the last working config at boot and roll back your changes, no worries. And because packages don't share dependencies, another superpower is you can also just install the individual packages you need to be bleeding edge from unstable inside your otherwise stable config. NixOS is very different, and your assumptions about what is and isn't possible may not be valid. Mine certainly weren't. This same ease of fixing problems meant that I felt, for the first time on any operating system, that I could just enable unattended background auto-updates of the whole system and everything would be fine. And it is. Here's a snippet to add to your configuration.nix. You can grab it and loads of other tips from the NixOS wiki. NixOS is weird in many ways, good and bad. The good outweighs the bad, but there's stuff to get used to. One wrinkle is that NixOS cannot run dynamically linked executables intended for generic Linux environments out of the box. Smart Nix people will tell you why this had to be, but I don't have the time. I'm too busy executing random binaries that wealthy princes email me on the daily. Put these two lines in your config to allow normal binaries to work and move on with your life. My favourite surprise NixOS feature is that I can make new systemd services for arbitrary long-running commands trivially. Could I have done this by creating systemd units in Ubuntu or Arch? Of course. But I tended not to. It was out of my normal routine. But configuring systemd using the same config as for my normal day-to-day -day package management has made writing custom services easy, mundane, normal, even. And this is a subtle feature that touches everything in NixOS. Tweaking kernel modules is normal. Changing the xdg mime type config is normal. Tweaking font settings is normal. Changing x11 or Wayland settings is normal. Adding advanced audio backends like Pipewire or Jack is normal. Optimizing OpenGL and hardware acceleration settings is normal. And even adding my user to new groups is normal. Something that I never struggled with before, of course, but I also never committed the exact command to memory. I'd look it up every time. All these things, and everything else, configured in a single file in one simple syntax so I don't have to look it up each time. This is an enormous win for the powerful, unified Nix language. But what if you, like many new Nix users, don't get on with the complex config syntax? Look, I don't know if this is a good idea. I'm sharing this just between you and me and 200,000 of my closest friends. When I first tried NixOS, the Byzantine configuration language confused me. It seemed like Tomel in some respects, but it had semicolons, modules, and after scratching the surface, I realised it was an entire Turing-complete functional programming language. After four years, I actually think the Nix language is worth learning and getting used to in the same way that for all its faults, HTML is worth learning. Because it's the standard, and you'll be able to copy and paste any config you find on the internet. However, there's nothing stopping you from using Tomel for a simple config like this. If you can't get over the syntax, try this. There are a few more things to become familiar with, but you can do that while you learn your new system. Nix flakes are a modern feature of Nix, allowing exact reproducibility and much richer configuration. Home Manager is a very popular Nix-powered .files manager that integrates well into the Nix ecosystem. I'm not sold on this yet, but everyone loves it. I imagine I'll use it soon. An important implementation note is that all packages get their own dependencies. They are not shared. This uses more disk space, but NixOS is clever about reusing files and there's garbage collection options available. Nix, the underlying system, is perfect for building your dev environment per project too. This is how REPL.it can support every language and every package without containers or VMs. I have missed out so many details to keep this short, but here is the video you should watch next. Vimjoya's brilliant, fast guide on getting everything set up. This video gave me the key breakthrough about NixOS's enormous package repo and got me started. He's even got a repo with a simple starter config to copy. Go have fun. Try the latest packages, desktop environments, and apps, and all without reversing your mouse buttons. Thank you.
If you would like to support my channel, get early ad-free and tracking-free videos, VIP Discord access, or one-to-one -one mentoring, head to patreon.com forward slash noboilerplate. I've got a new fiction podcast out called The Phosphine Catalogue. If you like mysteries and art, check it out. If you're interested in transhumanism and hope punk stories, do listen to my weekly sci-fi podcast, Lost Terminal. Or if urban fantasy is more your bag, do listen to a strange and beautiful podcast I produce every full moon called Modem Prometheus. Transcripts and compile checked markdown source code are available on GitHub, links in the description, and corrections are in the pinned errata comment. Thank you so much for watching, talk to you on Discord.